Hello and welcome back. So still talking about APIs. And one thing I forgot to mention in the first video is that you can also send information. You just don't read information from the API. You can also send information to it. This is similar to a, I'll go back to the website example again, because this is the perfect example. So for example, in your website, if, for example, you want users to sign up, there's going to be a sign up page, right? Now on that sign up page, there's going to be entries. For example, it's just like a login page in this, in this case. So there you're going to have these input fields, right? So when you put information in those input fields and then you click send or login, what you're doing is you're interacting with the API and sending the information as post. So that is a post request because you are posting to it. When you're just reading from it with a, uh, like a URL, that's a get request. Now, these two things can combine because it's very possible to save information using a get request as well. Just like, for example, if you are on the, uh, on Facebook and then you click like. So when you click like button, you're actually changing something in the database of, uh, of Facebook using a get request because that is just a URL you are clicking and then it likes something. So that liking is just saving information in the database about that particular post. So you are really just interacting with the database. So everybody on Facebook, what they are doing really is manipulating the database at Facebook. They're just using an abstracted interface so they don't really see that they're constructing queries and all that stuff. So just keep in mind that you can both read and write information to a, uh, an API. And during those times, you can use, use both get and post requests. It just depends on how the API was designed. You can use either post or get. Okay, so let's go to the... Um, let's get started and create something that we can actually interact with. Okay. So before we interact with any APIs on the internet here, let's create our very own so that we understand what's going on on the API side of things, right? So what I will do here is let's go to our docs folder. Now make sure that your Apache is actually running. Apache should be running. We don't need MySQL for now, but, uh, we may need it in future. So just make sure Apache is running. Install ZAMP on your system. If you don't have a server, just uh, browse, Google it and install it. Once you're done, open the control panel and then start Apache there. Okay, so let's go to the htdocs folder and create two folders here. So we're going to create one folder. Uh, first of all, let me create a new folder, in the htdocs and call it API. Hopefully I don't have a folder named that already. Okay, great. So we have that folder called API. Now we're going to create two websites in here to represent the source and the uh, one that's getting information and one that's, uh, one API, sorry, and one that tries to retrieve information from that API. So what we will do here is, um, I don't know how to call these two. So one will be API even though we are retrieving the, we are re, uh, redoing that name there. So I hope it won't be confusing. So that's the API. And then this one is our um, website. So one is the website that wants to read information from the API. So we're going to pretend these are not on localhost. These are different websites completely. Okay. So now what I will do is let me grab this uh, API folder and drop it in my text editor here, Sublime Text, so you can use any text editor. This is my choice. Okay, so inside the API, let's construct an API so we can read from it. So I'm going to create a new file in here. Now the API is very, very simple, nothing fancy here. What we're going to do is just create some JSON data like this. So usually if you want many records in JSON, you put those records in an array because an array can hold a lot of information and an array is just two square brackets, that's it. And then for each item, we're going to use an object. So this is just a personal uh, preference because an array like this, 
can have information like uh, one then uh, two these are items in the array here but we want to use objects like that it's it's just preference i could use another array in here no big deal so let's use objects instead and in this object i'm going to have name uh, and then the name will be john like that you must use double quotes right otherwise it won't work let's put a comma and then here we're just going to say age and then let's put a full column age this is a number so we don't need quotes okay and then uh so we have name we have age we have um, what else can we put let's put an email so we're just going to say john at yahoo.com okay so once we have that one object we can create another this is why it's a good idea to have an array out here because it can fit multiple items like this so let me copy that duplicate that like so and then we can add a different user now let me just change the john to mary and then let's put 34 here maybe something like that so we have two users here and we're going to save this so i'm going to save this as a php file so this is just going to be my index.php or i don't know i can call it my api dot whatever it is so php so index.php is fine there we go so if we try to open this um let me go to my browser right here we're going to go to localhost and from localhost we'll go to api and then slash api again and then index.php but we don't need to put it it will add that on its own so as you can see this is the data we have it's just a piece of string okay but it's formatted in json format so that we can reuse it oh i added a comma at the very end here which is not good remove that comma save it again let's try to read from it okay there we go nothing fancy just a piece of string now the thing is uh you don't have to put json data in this at all you can put just normal plain text but it's just not so useful because json is a way to convert a string into an array of organized data so we are simply using json because we want it organized otherwise there's nothing wrong with just typing a name here or a word no problem it's going to read that still so i'm going to save this we are done with the api that's it for our api let's go to our website now and in here we'll have some php code okay so now the question becomes now let me save this index.php okay so that's our website so if i open our website you see that uh, it's totally empty so i'm going to open a new tab here let me go back move it a bit here and i'm just going to copy what's here put it there and instead of the api it's going to be our website like so slash so also retrieving the index page but it's empty we're not doing anything there okay so now i want to retrieve information from the api which is the other website there so all i need to do to do is to know i need to know its url address so in my case i'm going to say url is equal to and then make sure you put the http there it's important so that uh, it can find its bearing and then i'm going to say localhost to tell it that uh, this is just a local website it's inside api folder slash api like that and then there's index.php like so so you must put that php there because this is not a browser to put that for you so there we go so this is the file we're trying to read from so remember this is just like reading uh, uh this is just like reading from the this is just like putting this link inside the browser so one way to do it in php is to use file get contents so i'm going to say data is equal to file underscore get contents like this and then you put your url in there like that okay it's as simple as that so now i can echo out the data so I'll just say echo sorry about that echo data like that 
So all I'm doing is specifying my URL and then I tell it to get the contents from there and then echo the data. Easy peasy, right? So let's go back and see what we get. So if I now refresh here, you see that I get that information from the API. Now, let me use some pre-tags here so we can see the thing a little bit better like that. Okay, great. So let me refresh that. And now you see the data looks more presentable, right? But this is exactly the information that we had on the API. Now, if this was a serious API, I wouldn't put the information just like this. This information would be in my database. And then all I need to do is read from the database and then echo the information here. Just as simple as that. Once I echo the, inf the information here, then whatever API, <coughs> excuse me there, whatever AP, uh, website is trying to read from this will be able to get that information from my database. So we're going to see how to do that as well. Now, the thing we've done here is very simple. Don't let this uh, fool you here that uh, maybe we can only retrieve local information. Uh, we can retrieve information from that website I was showing you earlier. So since we, if we go to the same page here, since I have the URL of that page, I'm just going to copy this URL like this, come back here. Oh, by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention, if you go to, if this is not working for you, for example, go to your XAMPP PHP INI file. So in the Apache config php.ini, you must make sure that the F open, uh, F open, just type F open in there and try to find it. Where is it? Okay, there we go. So the, oh, sorry about that. Okay, there it is. So it's this allow URL F open should be on. If it's off, then this won't work. This file get contents. So, but don't worry, we're not using file get contents for much. So if you can't change those settings, that's okay. So here, what I can do is change this URL. So let me change it from this one to this. So this is the login page on my other uh, online website. So this is online, it's not on my local host, but let's see if we can retrieve that data. I've removed the pre tags because we don't need them here. We are not getting JSON data. We are getting everything from that page. So if I now go back to my website here, this is my website and my local host, and I refresh that, instead of getting this local information, I'm going to get information from that other website. So that's why it's taking a bit of time to load because it has to go through the internet here. And uh, if you've been a regular viewer of my channel, you know that my internet sucks. So we have to give it a moment here. But as you can see, the title has changed in there. You can see it says login eShop, which it isn't. It's supposed to be that, you see the title here? It's the same as that one there. So it's retrieving the information from there and there you can see it. Voila, that page has been retrieved, even though this is not the correct URL for this website. But I'm able to retrieve that information and bring it here. However, you can see that some of the images are missing. Uh, this is because Font Awesome is from a different website. So this violates some rules for cross-site scripting and all that. That's why uh, you won't see some of this stuff. Probably some images wouldn't load either. But at least this illustrates the point that you can use file get contents to just get things from the internet. Okay, so let's look at the, a more robust way to do it in PHP. And that's by using a library called curl. It's actually C URL. So it's written like this. Uh, C is usually the small letter and then URL like that. So as you can see, it's suggesting some curl functions here. So it means we are on the right path. So this stands for a uh, client for URL. So it's just the URL client. That's it. C URL. That's what it's called. So we're going to use that in replacement for this. So how do we use this instead? So we want to end up with data still at the end of the day. So what I will do now 
is create a new curl uh, instance. So all I have to do is initialize it. So I'm going to call this one curl like that. You can call it anything you want. It's just a variable. So I'm going to say curl is equal to curl underscore init like that. So this is how you initialize curl here. Now I can supply the URL in here. That is fine to tell it that I'm dealing with this URL here. That's okay. But we're going to do it another way with options. That way you can see how to add more options. So we don't need this anymore. Just going to remove that. So curl init is like that. And then there's one called curl exec. So I'm just going to say curl data here. Data is going to be equal to curl underscore exec like that. And then we're going to execute this curl handle because this just initializes and gives us a handle to use. This is the handle because it's what we will put in the options just to tell it we are talking about this version of the initialization of curl. So it seems it wants to suggest the ch as the name. So to make things easier, let's just use ch as the name. Why not? So let's put the thing there like so. Okay, so that's ch ch right there. It's just a handle for this. So this is all you need. You know, you initialize it and then you execute it, period. So let's see if uh, this is going to work at all. So I'm going to go back here and refresh my page. Okay, so it didn't work. Why? Because we didn't have enough options here. So we need to add a few options to tell it exactly uh, what to do. So to add options, we're going to use curl set opt like that. So what this does is it set options. So this ch should be that handle. Okay, so that's the handle there. And then we need to have to know the option name and then the value of that option. So there are just a few options we need. Most of them start with, um, okay, let's do this. Let me go back here and let's go to curl, basic example of curl here. So if you want uh, option, where is this? Introduction. So let's just right click here and put curl there so that I can uh, show you all the options that you have. Now, meanwhile, here we can see that there are a few that we need. If you notice, they all start with curl. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is curl opt, curl opt. Most of them, not all of them. Most of them start like this. So this is easy to remember. And then the name of the actual option that you want there. Okay, so here, this is curl URL. This is how you set the URL you want to read from. So let's use this one for now. So here there will be a list of all of them. For example, uh, curl opt, right? If I go to find this curl set opt, this one, if I click on it, and then it's going to give me uh, a list of the options that I can add in it. So while that is loading, because uh, too slow, let's copy that option. So that's the option and let's put our URL in that option. So I'm going to put the URL here like that. Okay, so we've set that option well and good. Let's duplicate this a couple of times because we'll set two more options here. The second one is return transfer. Now this one tells it to return a value. The reason why it didn't return a value the first time is because I hadn't set this option. So it did try to read from the website and it, it managed. However, it didn't return anything. So we must put that here. Return transfer. And let's set that to true. You can just say true like this, or you can put one. Same thing, no big deal. So let's put true. It's more readable. And then let's come back here and do one more. Actually, that's about it. Mm -hmm. For now, this is all we need, I think. Great, great. Now, you need more options if you're actually sending data. But in our case, we're just retrieving data. So in fact, if I had added this URL in there, I wouldn't need this anymore. I'll just use this one. But for consistency, let's just leave that there. It's up to you. So simple thing, initialize, set the URL, and then tell it to return something 
and then run the thing and grab what was returned and echo it. So let's see if uh, we are in business. So refresh. And judging from the fact that it's taking a little bit longer than last time, I think we are getting a result. We're going to know if we're getting a result soon enough if, oh, there we go. I was going to say if the title changes there, but you see, now we retrieve information using curl. So the reason to use this, is it's more robust than get file get contents. And some websites are very strict. You need to set headers and all that, which you can't do with file get contents. In here, you can do a bunch of things. You can pretend to be a browser, for example, and spoof a request, etc., etc. Especially if you are crawling uh, websites from other people. But otherwise, this is all you need uh, to read uh, from a an API. Okay, so we're not really reading from any API for now. But let's try that. Let's go to an actual API. This is the JSON placeholder that we had seen earlier and so let's go down here and see what it has to offer so here we have a url so let's copy that url copy and let's paste that url here paste okay so it says to do's and we are getting the to do number one okay very good let's see how that happens and then we're going to echo the data down here okay pretty easy right let's now refresh the page and see uh, what will happen there we go so look at that we have retrieved uh, some information hmm? if I now remove the pre tags like so we will see it uh, in a better view because it's uh, JSON like that so we are communicating with an API so they in simple terms, what we are simply doing is reading information from the database on that particular website here. Only that it has certain rules that it follows in order for it to get the correct information. It needs to know what you want. So this is why we add this to do slash one, just to get it uh, to tell you, to tell it exactly which record you want to retrieve. But otherwise it's that simple. Okay. so. In the next video, look at how to actually send data to an API. I'll see you then.